everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to do my beauty favorites of 2016. The products that I use and reach for every single day and that if I ran out of them I would go and repurchase them. So I'm going to go in order of how I would put it on my face. The very first one is primer and this is the Makeup Forever Smoothing Primer. I reach for this one so often. The reason why I like it so much is that it fills in my pores without leaving um, them clogged. I use both the professional and this one and I find that they do very similar things with filling in the pores but coming off easily at night and not staying on the skin. So my biggest concern with my skin is large pores. So this is something that really it makes my makeup go on a tiny bit, does go a long way, but professional I'm completely out of and is definitely something on my list to repurchase. The foundation favorite of 2016 are something that you guys probably know, something that I have spoke about one too many times, but I'm going to touch on again because it's definitely something that I would repurchase and something that was my favorite from 2016 is the Progo Infallible as well as the Infallible Pro Matte. As you guys know, if you've watched my videos before, the best way to use these two is mixing a little bit of each. So I put a dollop of each on the back of my hand, mix it together, and that is the best way I've found to use these foundations. Pro Glow was a little bit too glowy for me, Pro Matte's a little bit too matte, but mixing them together is ideal. Because I am Canadian, it is hard to find the brand new Infallible that just came out, so I am on the hunt for it. If you're Canadian as well and you know where I can grab that foundation, be sure to let me know in the comments below because I am on the hunt. If I love these two, I'm sure that I will love the new Infallible one as well. So this is definitely my go-to. I am in 202 in the Pro Glow as well as 101 in the Pro Matte. The concealer that I have rediscovered in 2016 is the NARS Radiant Concealer. I am in the color Vanilla. Yeah, in the color Vanilla. And it's something that I've rediscovered. I did run out of it and I put it on the back burner because I have so many other concealers to use up. But when I realized that no concealers were cutting it anymore, I repurchased this guy on the 20% off VIB Rouge sale. And I have not turned back since. It is something I have been loving and something I would highly recommend if you're looking for a great coverage without being creasy or drying. I do always set my under eye concealer with a powder but I don't find it's overly drying either because it is very creamy but also makes a kind of like a glowy bright effect around my eyes. The tool that I cannot live without to apply these foundation and concealer products is the Beauty Blender. It is something that I could not live without in 2016. Not sure how I lived without it in 2015 but it is something that I reach for every single day. My New Year's resolution is to clean my beauty blenders a little bit more. I probably clean them not as much as I probably should, but it is on my list to do. Before I move into eyeshadow, I thought I'd touch on the product that I put all over the base of my eyes every single time I do my eyeshadow. I, because I am so fair, I find that I have really veiny eyelids. So you can kind of see all the veins, the vessels, that kind of thing in my eyelids, and it's not cute. So the thing that I use to counteract that color is the MAC Paint Tree Paint Pot. This is over the year of 2016. It's still good. It's not hard. I love this product, but it is something that as soon as it's out, I will be repurchasing. I'm lucky enough that it has not dried up yet, but I'm sure that will happen in the near future. So this is something that I would highly recommend if you want a good base for your eyeshadow to stay, as well as you want to cancel out any freckles, blueness, darkness, anything like that you have on the eyelids, and it comes in a variety of shades as well. The palette I've been loving is the Stila palette. I have mentioned this before. This is their old version of their palette. They do have a new one. I think it has a couple more shades in it as well, but they have one that's very neutral, very similar to this guy. It is something that I reach for every single time I want to do an eye look without thinking about it. Just do one and throw it on the eye with a bunch of blending brushes this is something that I reach for often there's a color in here this guy here called clay it is the most beautiful transition color I have found <clears throat> this is a Bobbi Brown antique rose single eyeshadow which is quite similar because I found it because I wanted to find something that was most similar when I run out of this for the transition shade a powder that I've been loving for a other setting under my eyes or just powdering like my nose area is the hello flawless by benefit it is completely empty. I'm in the color Champagne. I'm not sure which range this is, if this is the lightest color out of the bunch, but I am in dire need of repurchasing this. I'm kind of trying to use up a couple things I have before going out and repurchasing my staples, but it is a struggle. It is a struggle to use the things that I don't love as much on my complexion every day. 
Moving into bronzers, something that I have been loving and can't get enough of is this Quo bronzer. So Quo is a line that is at Shoppers Drug Mart here in Canada, and then I'm sure there's an equivalent, or you can order it online from them, um, in the States or anywhere else. This is what the bronzer looks like. It is just a big old pan of bronzer. It looks very orange and dark in here. It looks like it would be too dark for a fair person like me, but when I swatch it, it's a very neutral brown, so you could use it for anything like contouring, you could use it, I just use it like for bronzing up my cheeks, but I love this shade, and what it does is really blends out effortlessly, but it is something that I've been gravitating towards a lot. Another bronzer that's on my list that I do love is the Hourglass Ambient Light Bronzer in Light, I believe. Um, I have it here. This is another bronzer that I have been loving. It is way too expensive to mention because it is like $75 or $80. So it is the one that's on the second tier here. It is more of like a sheer bronzer with a little bit of that sheen and shimmer to it. But I do really, really like it. They are opposites. This one's matte and very opaque. This one's more sheer and has a little bit of shimmer in it. But they have both been something I've been reaching for in 2016. The blush that I have been loving throughout the 2016 is Rock Tour. So this one is by Benefit. I only have it in this palette here, which is their limited edition, like five pan, full size palette. It's the perfect like pinky nude shade that if you had more of a bold eye or a bold lip, it would never come in between the two. It is so beautiful. The person who actually um, reminded me that I had this in my collection was Coffee Break with Danny. I'm not sure if you guys follow her, but if you don't, you should. She reintroduced me to this when she threw it on in a tutorial, I was like, Hey, I have that too. This is what it looks like. It's just a nice, beautiful, like pinky peach shade. Um, and I've used it every day since I saw her tutorial. And it is something that going into 2017 is probably something that I'll continue using because it is so neutral. And neutral is what I like on a daily basis. 2016 was such a highlight year. Everyone and their dog had a highlighter that they loved. So I actually couldn't decide between two. The very first one I have is the Laura Mercier Highlight 01. So it looks like this. Once you have it on the skin, it's more of like a neutral highlight, not so much like in your face like Champagne Pop or any of the Becca ones. More neutral, but it is still there. You can still see it. It is the one that I'm wearing today. The other one I have here is Revolution. So it is a highlight that is from the drugstore. It is the very top here. It is such a unique highlighter. In different lights, it can look different colors. So it kind of looks more blue, more purple. The packaging of this highlighter is not the cutest. It is the cheapest packaging ever. The name worn off in like the first two days that I had it, but it is only a $10 highlight opposed to the Laura Mercier like $40 one. So it kind of depends what you're looking for, but both of these are in my top favorites from 2016. Moving into mascara, if you guys have followed me on Instagram or anywhere else, you would know which mascara is my favorite of the year. It is something that I discovered at the very beginning of the year, but it's something that's been a tried and true throughout the whole year. It is the CoverGirl Super Sizer Mascara. This one currently, is the fiber mascara. The other original one is in my purse, so I don't actually have it here with me today. It is such a good mascara. It is something that I find volume separates, lengthens, does everything that I needed to do without adding clumpiness and thickness. I don't want that to my lashes, but on a daily basis, I do have quite long and full lashes. So using a mascara like this just emphasizes what I have, and it is something that I would highly, highly recommend. Something that I'll repurchase, forever and I will be so upset if they ever discontinue this mascara. Two eyeliners that I have been loving for 2016 are at two different ends of the spectrum. I have been using different shades of liner. Normally I just use a black liquid liner, but I have been reaching out and using other things that I already have in my collection. Tardis Little Amazonian Clay Eyeliners. It comes with a tiny little brush in a little set. This was a 500 point perk and it is something that I love. I do want the full little collection of them. They're on the Tarte website, but the shipping to Canada is outrageous. So I'm just trying to wait for some free shipping and then I'll order the little set that has like the black, brown, and blue in it. But this is the bronze shade. It is so beautiful. You get a perfect winged liner when you use both the little tool that comes with it as well as the liquid. I love the formula. It stays all day. It also has the bronzy one is has a little bit of metallic -y gold to it opposed to just the the brown because there's a straight up brown one that's for sale but I love the bronze one it gives a little bit of definition to the face 
if you want to do more of like a neutral look without doing too much on the eyes this is an eyeliner that I gravitated towards so much in 2016 another liner that I do really like is the Arden C in uh, Modester liner I got this liner I'm actually not even sure where I think from a subscription box maybe and I've never used it as much as I do now it is a beautiful just like bronzy gold shade can you see it there a little bit it's a beautiful shade what it does is that I take a little angled brush and I kind of wipe it on the tip of the liner to be able to get the sharp edge and then I do the wing on my eye I don't necessarily like just like a pencil across my eyelid so adding a little bit of the wing with this really does help with the still using this beautiful shade it's like an olive green brown shade but I love it so much and I'm not even sure where to purchase this if I run out I know Sephora has a couple of shades but they have like three shades in the most neutral like brown black and blue or something not this like beautiful olive brown shade so I have been loving this for eyebrows I do have a couple favorites I have not been crazy about my brows recently brows was something in 2015 where I like that sharp stark square brow and I look back at pictures and I'm like what were you thinking so now it's more so about emphasizing the brow that I have and just being natural and emphasizing the arch of the brow a few items that have really stuck out to me in 2016 is the 3d brow tone so basically what this is is it's a tiny little brush from benefit cosmetics that kind of gives your brows a little bit of glow and highlight and definition so it doesn't fill it in it doesn't have fibers in it it's not going to emphasize um shape but what it does is emphasize the actual individual hairs it helps with like giving them a little bit of glow a little bit of shininess making it look a little bit more natural than what it is so normally what I do with this product is I pencil in my brows a little bit with a little bit of a feathering effect and then I go in with this to make it look like it's more of a natural brow. So this is something I've been loving, something that I just throw on top of my brows, keeps them in place, but it gives it more of like a glowy kind of effect. Same kind of thing I use for the Gimme Brow. This one is in the shade number one, the lightest one that I would need. I've been loving Gimme Brow. It just gives me a little bit of those fibers and definition in my brows. Go in with either one of these and just top it off. The very last but certainly not least product that I do have to share with you guys is a lip combo that I've been loving all throughout 2016 and that I have already repurchased to have back stock of them because they are my absolute favorite. It is the lip that I'm wearing today, so it is more of a neutrally pink. The very first item is Rouge Bunny Rouge Royale Lip Liner. This is a lip liner that not a lot of people have heard about. Rouge Bunny Rouge is, if you have not heard about it, it is a brand from Europe that you need to look it up. It is so good. All of their products are such high quality and beautiful. I'm swatching the items here so you guys can see. So the second product besides a lip liner is a lipstick. This lipstick is by Rimmel. It is by the Kate Collection. It's number 45. It is beautiful. It was supposed to be limited edition, but apparently they've made it permanent. So my back stock is not needed apparently even though I appreciate that I have it and one in every purse this is the shade that they come out as the lip liner is beautiful a little bit darker but then the lipsticks more of like a nudie pink I love these two together the lip liner is such a smooth rich formula very similar to like a Charlotte Tilbury lip liner but a little bit more affordable I believe I currently get mine from Lux Beauty Boutique in Edmonton, Alberta, so that's in Canada. I'm not sure where this else is sold, but it is something to definitely look up if you have not tried any of their products. I highly recommend them. Rimmel, any drugstore, it's my favorite lipstick. I have one in every purse like I mentioned, but it is something that if I have more of a bold eye like I do today, it is my go-to nude lip. So those are all of my beauty favorites from 2016, but each and every year does bring different products and different trends that I fall for and that I go into. So I look forward to what 2017 has to bring, what products I'll fall in love with, what will come out and what will be new launches, something that will catch my eye. Currently, I want the Sweet Peach Palette. The collection from them looks beautiful and it is something that I could not get my hands on when it first got launched. So looking forward to 2017 and what launches will come. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you have not subscribed to my channel, be sure to subscribe down below so you get notified every single time I make a new video. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.